Good morning everyone. So yesterday afternoon, Rimats announced their new hypercar, electric hypercar, the uh, Concept2. And it has some very, very interesting figures. Um, it's coming close to the Tesla Roadster in terms of performance. Price-wise, they haven't mentioned much, but uh, I've read somewhere that it would be at least 1 million euros. So that is uh, in a league of its own. It's going to be a limited edition of 100 cars. Um, but also Rimats is a company for which the cars are more like show cars and they help finance their other uh, business, which is their main business. And that is being a supplier for other companies such as uh, Jaguar or Aston Martin. Um, so yeah, but it's still, it's an interesting car. I was a fan of the Concept 1, which I think is really gorgeous. But now they brought out the Concept 2. And let's have a look at what the numbers say there. Now first, if we uh, look at the car and we look at the dimensions. So it's, it's a white car, of course, since it's a supercar or hypercar even. Uh, the width is close to two meters. so. 1 meter 98 or a little over 78 inches the height is 1 meter 20 or 47.5 inches which makes this a very low car uh, which would be ideal for me because then i can just uh, wash the roof easily uh, <laughs> as for length it's a quite lengthy car it's it's 4 meters 75 or 187 inches uh, which is shorter than the Model S and the Model X, but we don't have Tesla Roadster dimensions officially yet, but I think the Roadster is going to be a little bit shorter than that. Um, so yeah, so it's going to be a little bit longer. But important is that the car will only weigh uh, 1,950 kilograms or uh, 4,300 pounds, which is considerably lighter than the Model S, which it needs to be, of course, uh, because, well, the car is a supercar. It needs to go fast. Uh, so that means it needs to keep its weight as low as possible. But then, of course, you have the battery, uh, which will come into effect, which I'll come back to in just a little bit. Now, if we look at the performance figures, uh, those are mighty impressive. So the 0 to 60 miles an hour, or that's 96 kilometers an hour, it does that in 1.85 seconds, uh, which is 0 0.05 seconds faster than what Tesla claimed. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they actually aimed for that to be below that uh, number. But that includes a one foot rollout uh, also, and that's what Tesla calls the motor trend spec. Um, so those numbers are comparable. The 0 to 100 kph, which is the 0 to 92 miles an hour, is done in 1.97 seconds. So that's the first car officially to go below two seconds for a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. If you count that for the, for the Roadster, that will be just over two seconds. Um, but I've, uh, heard or read somewhere that the Roadster was internally tested at Tesla already at 1.7 seconds, 0 to 60, so that would be this car again. We'll see when we get more numbers. The 0 to 300 kilometers an hour or the 0 to 186 miles an hour is done in 11.8 seconds. That's, that's just crazy. So this car is not just quick off the line, it keeps being quick all the way through to, uh, to top speed. Um, to compare uh, the Bugatti Chiron, which is basically the hypercar, um, it does that in 13.6 seconds. So that's 1.8 seconds faster to 300 kilometers an hour in the uh, Concept2. That's, that's just amazing. The quarter mile is done in 9.1 seconds, which is a tad slower than the claimed 8.9 seconds or 8.8 seconds for the uh, Tesla Roadster. Um, so that gives some promising performance for the Roadster if they can uh, hold true to that. 
top speed 412 kilometers an hour or 258 miles an hour uh, Tesla states that it's at least 400 uh, kilometers an hour or 250 miles an hour but we don't know the actual uh, top speed yet so either they're working on that or they are actually getting a very high top speed well 400 is already very high but even higher and they want to go for the fastest car in the world as well they want to set that record as well so again we'll have to wait for that the power that's that's just crazy it's 1408 kilowatts or 1914 horsepower that's that's just that's beyond insane and ludicrous or whatever it's beyond maximum plat probably as well um, i was estimating the tesla roadster to be around 1500 horsepower to get the claims that it does uh, but yeah uh, we'll see what what needs to happen uh, there of course the motor torque is 2300 newton meters the wheel torque in first gear is set to 17047 newton meters now the wheel torque that's a combination or a multiplication from the motor torque with the gearbox and the, and the drive ratio um, so yeah tesla claimed they have a 10,000 newton meter torque uh, but that's a wheel torque uh, so we don't know what the motor torque is on the on the uh, on the roadster because that depends on the kind of gearbox that they're using uh, but i said first gear so we'll come back to the gearbox later it will have carbon ceramic brakes aluminum forge wheels with aero covers for smoother airflow and thus longer range uh, NEDC range is 650 kilometers or 403 miles now remember this is the NEDC range which is used in Europe uh, which is not realistic at all so the uh, Tesla 100D the Model S 100D has an NEDC range of 632 kilometers which is more or less comparable and in the real world you do let's say between 450 and 500 kilometers or between 280 and 310 miles uh, at least on Belgium roads uh, it might be different in other countries where they have smoother or less smooth roads and of course climate uh, temperature rain wind everything uh, as we know uh, will influence that but the 450 to 500 kilometers that would be a uh, how should i put it it would be a uh, range that this car can do without any problem uh, maybe even more if you look at uh, another image then we'll see that the charge port is a ccs charger um, and again we'll come back to the to the charge rates uh, when i talk about the battery it has four motors one for each wheel but they're combined uh, in, in in the center of the car the front two motors have a single speed gearbox and the rear two motors are connected to a two speed gearbox so one low speed for hard acceleration and one high speed for the uh, top speed run now let's take a look at the uh, battery so the size is 120 kilowatt hours and it is comprised out of 6960 2170 cells so those are the same form factor as a model 3 battery has uh, which is interesting um, and and they claim to get 120 kilowatt hours out of 6960 cells which is a lot less than the 8256 uh, 18650 cells in the model s p100d or the 100d as well so the energy density in those 2170 cells they they that's really high compared to the what we have in the current uh, model s and model x cars the battery can be charged at up to 250 kilowatts on dc and it will have 22 kilowatt three phase ac charging too uh, we used to have that on the uh, model s but for some reason th that was a dual charger option so you had 11 kilowatts as as the uh, main option and then you could expand it with another charger and uh, and then you get 22 kilowatts three phase charging um, but for some reason i don't i don't understand tesla has uh, abandoned that and they now have a high power charger 
uh, of uh, a maximum of 16.5 kilowatts. I really miss those 22 kilowatts. It's not like you need that every day, but when you need it, it's, it's going to be uh, like 25% faster than uh, what we currently have. So that's the downside on, on my new car. The battery itself is T-shaped uh, uh, as a layout, and it is also a structural part of the car, just as the uh, Tesla battery is. Uh, Mate Rimats also announced that the cooling is, they have like seven different cooling units, uh, but the cooling is sufficient to get full, two full power laps of the Nürburgring without any power degradation from the heat. So that's, that's, uh, that's a car you can drive fast and drive hard for a longer time. If we look at the design of this uh, car, it has the butterfly doors similar to what the McLaren has. So it's clearly a supercar, it's not a daily driver. Um, also, you have a little trunk in which you can put like maybe two apples and an orange, if you're lucky. Uh, it can be configured, the little trunk can be configured to hold uh, a drone, to hold, it shouldn't be a Phantom because that's too large probably. Uh, it can hold some racing helmets, you can customize it to whatever you want, um, which is what I kind of expect for a car that costs more than 1 million euros. Um, on the other hand, there, uh, if with the doors itself, because there's, there's these butterfly doors, you're not going to hit any curbs with the doors. So it's a very low car, but the doors will open uh, widely and, and, and upwards, so you don't hit the curb. Um, the car is also a carbon fiber monocoque, uh, which is the whole cage that the driver is sitting in, which is one structure. And the body is made of carbon fiber and aluminum crest structure as well. Uh, so yeah, if you crash this car, it's going to be extremely expensive. So the guys that are buying this, don't crash it, please. Um, but as a general remark, I don't really like the design. There's this huge active wing, which I'll talk about in a minute when I, when I discuss the aerodynamics. Um, there's these big holes in, in the, the hood or the bonnet uh, to let the air flow through. Uh, but it's kind of, the whole car is kind of shouting like, hey, look at me. And I'm more a fan of the understatement uh, uh, that the car is more like a, I'm not saying a sleeper car, but it's a sporty car, but it's not shouting at you. Um, so that's what I like more. But that's, hey, that's my personal taste, of course. So for me, the Concept One, I really like that car uh, from a design point of view. So yeah, um, given if I had the money and I had to choose between the two of them, I'd, I'd go for the Concept One. But of course, they, I don't have that money and they don't build that anymore. And of course, since it's a hypercar, the car has some uh, active aerodynamics. So as I mentioned, the bonnet or the hood has these two large vents for airflow going from the front of the car through the car and then up the windscreen. Uh, or it also has controlled flaps so it can direct that airflow more towards cooling the battery even more when, uh, when needed. The wing at the back, that's an active wing that constantly adjusts to get uh, better downforce uh, for cornering, for example. And it also is used under hard braking as uh, an active air brake, uh, which we've seen on the uh, McLaren and Bugatti Veyron and Chiron cars. Um, and on those cars, the air brake has as much stopping power as the brakes on a small car. So yeah, I'm expecting some decent braking power from this one too then. Um, and probably because it's an active wing, it will retract almost completely uh, for, the, uh, for the top speed run. The front splitter also guides air to the wheels and to cool the brakes. And then uh, after the wheels, there's this little vent. Uh, well, it's, quite, it's quite a big vent actually to let go of that uh, pressure that is building up in the uh, wheel well, so you don't get a high pressure area in the wheel well. The drag coefficient for this car is 0 0.28. Um, 
And for the Model S, the facelift Model S, that's a 0.21. The Model X and the Model 3 are 0.24, I believe. So yeah, that's, that's uh, not as slippery, but then again, if you go at these speeds, over 400 kilometers an hour, the car cannot be too slippery, because if you make it too slippery, it's, it's like a wing, it will, there's a chance that the car might take off. And you don't want to be in a car that's taking off at uh, 250 miles an hour. Um, I mean, if, you have to remember that the takeoff speed of a fully loaded 747 is only 184 miles an hour. So yeah, that's, that's just faster than the takeoff speed of a jumbo jet. Um, to keep the car to the ground and suck to the ground, the underbody is also completely flat, which uh, uh, a, a, re a massive rear diffuser, which creates a Venturi effect that sucks the car to the ground uh, as well. So the aerodynamics, they are top notch on this car as well, of course. Now, next up, we are looking at the uh, features, so both the general features and the safety features. So as general features, you have uh, a mode which is called the driving coach which can load several racetracks on its onboard system and it will guide you to uh, get the uh, best lane on a track. Right? So uh, it will learn you how to drive the racing circuit uh, via visual and audible cues. Um, so the audible thing like turn here, start braking, uh, that's, that's cool. The visual thing, I would love to see something like Augmented reality projected on the windscreen, so you have an arrow to follow, maybe. Uh, but right now I get the impression it's just on the dash, and I don't think you want to be looking at the dashboard when you're racing on a circuit. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nifty little thing, but I'm not sure how practical it is going to be. Uh, the car has tons of computers inside as well. It has facial recognition that can replace the key fob. Uh, the system monitors over 500 uh, channels of telemetry or parameters which you can interrogate and visualize on an app or on a laptop so talk about configuration options <laughs> I know a few Tesla folks who uh, would be happy to get all that data uh, to, to play around with and to see what the car actually does um, and just as the Tesla Roadster this car has a passenger side display in this car, it's a lot bigger than what I saw on the Roadster, which was a very, very tiny display. And in the uh, Concept 2, it's also customizable uh, by the passenger, so that, that's cool. And the passenger can follow along on the route, you can see how fast you're going, uh, maybe uh, view some statistics along the route. Uh, so yeah, that's, that seems to be cool. And then we have the uh, safety features. So it's uh, artificial intelligence enabled ADAS functions. So the ADAS stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Um, so those are the, the general systems that we know like blind spot warning and, and lane assist and those kind of things. So that's the general term for that. Um, but the car generates eight terabytes of data for every hour of driving, which is a massive amount of data. I don't know how they are going to store it, uh, but there has to be some huge storage in there as well. And of course the car is always connected, so Rimats can also look at the car uh, remotely and debug things or, and push software updates, uh, as they uh, obviously will do. So the car has blind spot detection, lane assist, adaptive cruise control, and what they call a traffic pilot. They didn't explain in detail what a traffic pilot is, but given the fact that they have the lane assist, adaptive cruise, I'm thinking that uh, when the car comes out, then it will be comparable to the Tesla Autopilot. But Rimats also said that the car is ready and has the hardware uh, to do level four driving. And this, of course, is still working on that, but um, it, it can do level four driving in the end. Now, one of the things that he mentioned, and I thought that was quite interesting, and that's something that Tesla doesn't have at the moment, is that the car can adapt to various weather conditions and adapt the strategy of handling uh, based on those conditions like fog or heavy rain. So the, the cruise control would take more distance in fog. With heavy rain, it will take more distance. It will calculate that it needs a larger stopping distance and stuff like that. 
So yeah, that, that would be a few steps ahead of what Tesla currently offers. But of course, Autopilot is also improving constantly. So uh, who knows what we have by the time that uh, this car comes out uh, to, to the actual buyers. They're currently, it's a prototype. They currently have to go to homologation and everything. So it takes a while for them before actually a first owner will take uh, ownership of his car. The sensor suite for this uh, traffic pilot uh, is, is kind of interesting. They have eight cameras, so three forward facing on the windscreen, two in the mirrors looking back, and two on the B-pillars looking sideways, and one rear view camera. So that's exactly the same setup as what uh, Tesla is doing. Um, they have 12 ultrasonic sensors for 360 degree coverage, which is exactly the same setup as what Tesla is doing. They have a high precision GPS, which is exactly the same as what Tesla is doing. But, so yeah, Elon must, must, be, on, must be onto something if others are, say, are believing in the same system. However, uh, Rimac is taking this uh, a few steps further by adding one front LiDAR, uh, maybe a second one, it says on the website, but it's not for sure yet. But one LiDAR is going to be at the front. And it has six radars surrounding the car, again for 360 degree coverage. Uh, so one in the front, two in the uh, front sides, uh, two in the rear sides, and one at the back uh, for uh, that, that 360 degree coverage. Um, so it's the same setup as Tesla, and they've added a bit more. Uh, and quite a bit more actually. Maybe it's overkill and, and Elon Musk can still uh, make true on his claims. But when it comes to safety, I don't think you can have enough redundancy in sensors. So when the ultrasonics are failing, the radar might be able to take over and stuff like that. So yeah, so maybe they're just foreseeing enough sensors. They might not use all of them. They may use all of them. So we'll have to see in the future what that uh, brings. But yeah, I think this is a very interesting car um, it's a very interesting approach to see it like this um, with the sensor suite uh, so i'm kind of curious what they what they are going to do the performance is comparable to the tesla roadster but the price is not right and also the tesla roadster is supposed to be a two plus two seater we don't know yet how big the two back seats are but um, yeah so it's, it's not really a competition uh, or a competitor for the, for the Roadster. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to see these kinds of cars appearing because I know a lot of people have the comments that the, uh, these cars are unnecessary. Right? It's, it's better to have like $35,000 cars uh, or 35,000 euro cars that the common people can buy because it, this is only for the rich and famous and yes that's true but it's these cars that pave the way for the mainstream cars because hey this is new technology they're pushing the limits and they're using what they learned to actually uh, get those uh, learnings into the newer cars so yeah um, excited to see that uh, even more excited to see one day if they can pitch the uh, uh, Concept 2 to the uh, next-gen Roadster. That would be awesome. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments uh, about this car. And would you buy this one or the Roadster if you had the money? Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.